if I took a shot for every Bible quote in this book, I a lot of Bible quotes would be would be dead. Hello, everybody. My name is Tori. I am the founder of Her First Hundred K and the author and host of Financial Feminist, which is both a podcast and a book now. And I have a very public vendetta against um, the man we will speak about today. And I've actually never read one of his books because oh, never, I never touched it. I just I couldn't bring myself to do it. And um, so this was, uh, yeah, you really, you really popped my Dave Ramsey cherry here today. So thank you for that. So why do you? Why did you start hating him? And what? And what do you hate about Dave Ramsey? Uh, okay, how much time do we have? Okay, so I want to first first preface this entire conversation. He has helped a lot of people, mm -hmm. and I think that in a way, I don't know if my work, and I don't want to speak for you, but like I don't know if we could do the work that we do if it if he didn't exist. So mm. that's one thing. Um, I hate everything else. Um, <laughs> for me, half of it is the financial advice is either bad or it completely fails to acknowledge systemic oppression. Mm -hmm. That's one camp. And then the other camp is how he runs his business. He has fired folks who have gotten pregnant out of wedlock. He mm. is very vocal about being anti LGBTQ. Um, there's the way he runs his business. Like you have to, um, bring your own budget and your own uh, like personal finance reality to any job interview if you want to work at his company and he's been very very public about that so you have to like unveil how much money you do or don't have um which feels like like a complete violation of privacy but also maybe vaguely illegal so yeah for me it feels like there's two different camps one the advice does not acknowledge systemic oppression and is often bad advice very and bad then, advice the way he operates his company is something that I have, I, like, I'm just, I'm so, uh, it makes me so angry. <laughs> makes me so angry. So I didn't, he's also, uh, uh, it's cultish in a way, the way that Completely. he runs things, which we will get into. Cause I broke this book down into five categories that I will, I will say for you. Uh, my notes are all color coded. Okay. And I, I didn't know this about him, but I, suspected and then it really came full force is that he is deeply evangelical christian deeply deeply i thought it was kind of one of those things where all of these guys are pretty like christian um mm -hmm. but i did not realize how jesus forward this is like yeah this weaponizes is... christianity and the other thing too is financial peace university is like his big program and it is yeah. often taught in churches yes and yeah. Um, my lovely Ashley podcast host, host, Kristen, lives in Nashville. And mm -hmm. so his headquarters is in Nashville. We've talked about this a lot. Like, th yeah, the Financial Peace University in and around Nashville, but across the United States is mm -hmm. taught by people like within church. And I joke that he is the diet pill of personal finance of like he makes you he calls you fat and then gives you the diet pill for it. Yeah, like he, absolutely. You know, and then in addition, he weaponizes Christianity in order to sell his products. The 100%. Christianity is the marketing tool. It's the yes, tactic. which I didn't realize. Also, um, I'll get into this a bit later, but his real estate holdings, a lot of it is in, in terms of cultishness. There's a lot of stuff within his uh, biological family or married into his family in an almost mafioso way where his <laughs> son-in-law <laughs> runs the real estate corporation, but then doesn't put his name on some of the things where he sells Dave Ramsey's homes. And so it's kind of this capital realty group, which is, I'll get into it in a second, but with, which is a company that is under Dave Ramsey's uh, purview, Umbrella. but he uses yeah. to sell and he puts his son-in-law in charge of it, which is, and doesn't put his name on it, which is uh, like, lightly illegal in some ways definitely unethical and it all kind yeah. of works in the way that like the mob puts their houses in their wives names like that kind of thing no it's that's a great perspective he also he has like what he calls like the dave ramsey personalities right so he has like all of these other people who are under the ramsey umbrella including his daughter mm -hmm. and we've seen the downfall of a couple of these people one in particular who uh, was having, I think, various affairs with other women besides his wife and 
um, they tried to cover up said affairs right. and then it came out publicly and they were kind of forced to fire him then. So again, like all of the Christianity feels like it's like an asterisk where it's mm-hmm. like, oh, we're Christian and we're going to use this and like the prosperity gospel and all those things. But also like student debt forgiveness is a handout and mm-hmm. also uh, we will, you shouldn't cheat on your wife, but only if you discover that we've employed somebody who we know is cheating. Yeah, or, you know, there's, I I watched a couple of his call-in shows. There was definitely one with someone calling in about their spouse transitioning where he uh, was not respectful of the trans person's pronouns. Um, there was another one they where- they even called him. I'm sure I know. That the, no, wow. no, no. It was it was someone calling in to be like, I don't know what to do. My spouse is transitioning and they're mm. going to take all my money to be trans. It was like that. And then wow. the second- thing was someone called in and said what do I do if I don't want to leave an inheritance to my kids because their politics are more liberal than mine and they're leftist and he was like don't leave them an inheritance fuck that so like those are the two things that I've seen um and so before that I only knew his name from that kind of stuff I lightly looked into it and then uh I knew that he was Christian and I knew that you hated him and (laughs) I decided, so I decided to read, he has, God, so many books. Um, So so I decided that we would read uh, his number one New York Times bestselling book, Baby Steps Millionaires, How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth and How You Can Too. And he's just, look at this man. He's just a dad. He's just a regular guy. um, I call him Walmart Santa. That's what he is. Regular guy. Um, So, Okay. So the five categories that I broke this book into are one, God and Jesus, <laughs> two, excuses and identity politics, <laughs> three, great, cult status, <laughs> where, th- where things that he says or done have reached the status of being eligible to be a cult, yep. four, straw man arguments, and five, who is the audience for this book? <laughs> That was my thing, too, is I was like, what am I learning? How is this helpful? <laughs> you, you, did, you, did a, you did some data, and half the book is the appendix of the, the survey you ran. Oh, which... we're going to get into it. <sighs> so, those are, so those are my five categories. Um, they are color-coded. And I'll, I did this with Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is there's so much we could have said about Robert Kiyosaki. But... Another whole clusterfuck as well. Absolutely. Um, But I was like, let's just focus on the book itself because I feel like that's already so much. So we open with uh, him talking about uh, following God's way, live and give like no one else. And then he talks about hope and possibility, which comes up a lot because uh, the only way that his books can function is if people have this sort of thing that we've talked about a lot on the show, which is uh, people uh, striving for and having the hope and possibility that they one day too could be millionaires and billionaires, and um, and that and then when they reach that level, they won't advocate for more taxes, so they shouldn't advocate for them now, even though that would help them. So it kind of is uh, a very insidious use of hope of hope and possibility. You yep. mentioned financial peace universe. You know, eh. you mentioned financial peace university. Uh, a lot of the followers of this stuff become Ramsey financial coaches, which I thought was quite culty. MLM. Very MLM. Uh, my partner uh, once was targeted by an ADHD executive coaching c- group that said uh, a lot of our, they said, actually, a lot of our uh, uh, people that got coached, they went on to become coaches within our program. And they said that as a selling point. And I think (laughs) that that is a red flag. So none of these people are actually financial experts. They just went through Dave Ramsey's particular program. Right. Red flag. They learned the curriculum and maybe vaguely how to teach it. Yeah. It's how, um, it's, it's almost like a virus spreading is how I picture it. Like, you know what I mean? The little arms are getting bigger and bigger. We're not saying he is. However, if he's, I would say he's a virus. I would say he's not the virus. I don't know. He's a virus. (laughs) Sure. Sure. Okay. Then I really was 
mind blown because I was shocked by how quickly we got to Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. That right, was like fast. Sentence two, dude. Like sentence two. Incredibly right. fast. I am a, I am simply a steward of the blessings God has given me. Thoughts? Yep. If I took a shot for every Bible quote in this book, I a lot of Bible w- quotes would be would be dead. 